Hi, I'm Peter Beer, and this is the first episode in a series to help you on your pilgrimage to the National Catholic Youth Conference in Kansas City this November. So join me as we explore ways to make your NCYC experience the best it can be. A while back, you made the decision to go to NCYC. At that point, you became a pilgrim. Not a pilgrim on the Mayflower, but a young person in 2009 who's made the decision to go to Kansas City to have an experience with God. So if you're a pilgrim, that means you're on a pilgrimage. What is a pilgrimage anyway? Dictionary.com defines pilgrimage as a journey, especially a long one, to some sacred place as an act of religious devotion. That's what our trip to NCYC is, right? You and I, and a lot of other people, are traveling to a sacred place, the National Catholic Youth Conference, to celebrate our Catholic faith. We're not going on a vacation or to a tourist attraction, but we're making a sacred journey so we can grow closer to God. It's your presence at NCYC and the thousands of other people who will be there that will make the Sprint Center in Kansas City a sacred place. And to recognize that sacredness, there's going to be hundreds of priests and nuns and bishops and other religious there to celebrate along with us. Oh yeah, and Jesus is going to be there too. You came around. So where did this idea of pilgrimage come from anyway? Although we don't know where it came from or who made the first pilgrimage, we do know that almost every culture and faith has felt a need for pilgrimage in their lives. Native Americans take vision quests, Australian Aboriginals go and walk about, Buddhists and Hindus travel long distances to visit sacred temples. The Muslims go to Mecca. Even the Jewish people viewed themselves as a pilgrim people. Ever since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, they've been searching for a closeness to God. Moses led the Israelites through the desert for 40 years, pilgrimaging to the Promised Land. Jesus himself was a pilgrim, wandering Israel for three years, preaching, teaching, and healing, making his way to the cross in Jerusalem. Christian pilgrimage didn't really become popular until Christianity was legalized by Emperor Constantine in the year 313. Constantine's own mom, Saint Helena, made a famous pilgrimage to the Holy Land where she visited all the places from Jesus' life. When she came back and word spread about her pilgrimage, everybody wanted to go on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. This is sort of how the Stations of the Cross first started to take shape. People would travel to Jerusalem and walk the footsteps of Jesus on the way to the cross. Eventually, Christians started traveling around the world to other places made holy by the lives of saints. Today, the practice continues. People still travel to the Holy Land, to Rome, to Lourdes and Fatima, and World Youth Day, and other holy places. Throughout our Christian history, pilgrims have always sought forgiveness, healing, and purpose. Isn't that what we want from our trip to NCYC? We want fuller lives, to be closer to God, and to know his plans for our lives? Now we've always known that the destination on our pilgrimage, that sacred place, is only a part of the experience. The journey, the road we travel, is almost equal in importance. Now there are going to be a few things that we need on our journey to guide us and to help us along the way. And we'll explore these in the following episodes. But here's a list now so you have something to look forward to. We need guidance and direction along the way. A road map to keep us on the right path. Baggage. What do we need to take with us? What should we leave behind? Community. Who sends us? Who do we journey with? And who do we celebrate with when we get there? Rest, reflection, and prayer. It's a long road, so we need to take time out along the way. The destination. Do we have one? What do I do when I get there? And of course, the journey home. The idea of pilgrimage is sort of strange. Okay, so I'm going to leave the comforts of my home, travel a long and difficult journey just so I can have an experience with God. People might think you're a little strange for going to NCYC, but that's okay because in the end, pilgrimage is about you and God. Maybe when you return home, you'll inspire others to go on a pilgrimage as well. 
the end of every episode, I'll leave you with some reflection questions and a prayer to help you along the way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this time we've had together, and I hope to see you next time. Peace, Pilgrim. Here are some reflection questions to help you on your journey. How did you hear the call to pilgrimage to NCYC? What can you do to make your trip a sacred journey? And how do you feel about being called a pilgrim? What can you do to become more pilgrim-like in your everyday life? Let's end in a prayer. Lead me, Lord. Guide my every step on this journey. Protect me as I pilgrimage to your holy place. Bless all the pilgrims who walk the path to NCYC. Be with those who cannot make this pilgrimage with us. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen.